business persons have a multitude of things running through their heads all at the same time. They've got cost, they've got profit, they've got customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction. Now to you and I, these things may not be the sexiest terms on the planet, but to a business person, it just turns them on. Cargas body is actually made by Centro. That's that unit back there. This particular model is actually the Kia Carga 2500 dual aircon. And if you have a look inside, you'll actually understand what it is I'm going on about. On the exterior, well, there really isn't much to talk about the car, apart from the fact that you've got halogen headlamps and fog lamps found down here, a painted bumper, which is a nice touch as opposed to it being just black. And regardless of how huge or small their automobiles may be, it still has the signature Tiger Nose grille from Kia. More truck than SUV, and obviously more than a car, it actually sits on 200 millimeters of ground clearance, which is excellent for this particular vehicle. It also sits on 15 inch tires, which are disc brakes up front and drum at the rear. Now, apart from telling you that it looks like the broad side of a barn, a very white barn on the side, or a really oversized refrigerator, there really isn't much to talk about this thing. I mean, it does have character lines, but it's no pickup truck that's lying to win your heart, right? The dimensions of this mobile are quite a mouthful, and to be honest with you, I haven't memorized it, so we're gonna flash it on the screen right now. I can tell you, however, that it's this big. Man, that's a big, damn, that's a big car. Truck, I meant truck. Did I say car? I meant truck. At the rear, you've got taillights that resemble Wally's eyes when he's had tequila the entire night with Eva. Shame, shame. And then you've got a massive door that opens to easily put cargo or people inside with a step board and a grab rail to help you out. Now, the maximum payload capacity is over 1,200 kilograms. And oddly enough, the air conditioning system here at the rear has a thermostat, but the one up front doesn't. And if you're wondering if that air conditioning system is any good, if you've been around as long as I have or anywhere remotely in that region and you see a sticker like this, you know that that air conditioning system is friggin' cold. The question is, how many of me's can we fit back here? Without social distancing whatsoever, and if you open the second door to help you load stuff in, you can fit 12 of me inside this particular cabin. A good thing, yes. Bad thing, if you gotta sit back here with me, 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 dear God, me, 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 me. And to maximize the space even further, these four benches do fold up and lock into place, which will reveal space that's big enough to park even a picanto. In the front cabin, there's obviously space for three adults. But the thing is, I've always maintained that anybody that sits in the center, that's just friggin' torture, man, because you barely have any leg room and it's not very comfortable. So let's put that backrest down, which will reveal a cubby tray, two cup holders, and a coin tray. Hey, that's pretty cool. I didn't notice that before. Let's add that in. The dash actually looks more car-like than anything else. You've got your analog gauges up front with a tiny little trip computer in the center, which is no bigger than an Apple Watch. The air controls are a bit away from you, but they actually look nice. They kind of resemble that of the Saluto. The driving position is actually pretty comfortable. Unlike a car where it's more pull on the steering wheel, this because of your seating position is actually more push. So that's actually not bad. Unfortunately, although you do have creature comforts like power windows and uh, manual leveling headlamps, there is no infotainment system. And when I say no infotainment system, I mean like not even a radio. It's got an auxiliary port and a USB port, unfortunately that doesn't charge, and it doesn't have a reverse camera. In this day and age, I would expect that from this particular size of a vehicle. I mean, we have them on our standard automobiles and even those that are even tinier, much tinier than this, like the Picanto for instance. But in this car, no reverse camera, darn it. I wish they did have one though. Though I do realize that the people driving this particular automobile have probably more experience than Jack and I combined times three, it's still, a backup camera would obviously be a welcome addition to this particular vehicle. Do like and subscribe to our videos because we create them just for you. Under the hood, or rather under my seat to be exact, 
is a four-cylinder 2.5 liter turbo diesel that produces 128 horses and 255 newton meters of torque. So it may not go like a bat out of hell, but the amount of work that it can do is well just redonkulous. Oh, uh, I failed to mention that it also only comes in a six-speed manual transmission. Six-speed meaning that if you want to pop it into reverse, you don't necessarily push it away like a plate of broccoli when you're five years old. Uh -uh, this time, it's a box of donuts. You keep it as close to you as possible. Off the bat, the first thing that you're gonna notice if you ever drive this thing, or actually even if you're a passenger, is that NVH needs a lot of work. I find myself having to speak a little bit louder when I'm inside this car. And it's not the front cabin really that brings the noise. Uh -uh. It's the rear to be exact. It's because uh, the diesel engine can be heard through the rear cabin and there's a lot of rattles from the doors and seats uh, and the windows. And also, also, there's a lot of wind noise that creeps in there. So I think communicating with the passengers in the back, you might need a bullhorn. Hey, maybe we can borrow the bullhorn from the office. That might be an idea. Now, if we're talking about the suspension, that is sort of like an unfair thing for us to judge. To be honest with you, we haven't actually loaded the vehicle with much else than me, Jack, and well, the occasional Earl every once in a while. So we really don't know how it's gonna perform when it's fully loaded. We'd love to though, so if you ever get a chance to get out of quarantine and come join us on a shoot, do let us know. Because we want to do load at least like 30 people in here. Maybe 40, maybe even 50, who knew? That space back there is so big they can carry an elephant and two rhinos. Okay, I exaggerate. You'll need to take the rhinos out first before putting in the elephant. As many impressions as we can give about driving this automobile, it's probably not as important as getting the view from the back. The acoustics back here, well, it actually kind of sounds like you're in the bathroom. Comfort, well, it's a little bit on the bouncy side, obviously, because, well, it's not the full uh, complement of people back here. I'm sure it would be better if you fill her up. Safety, well, that's the thing. There is no ABS on this guy, and it's only got uh, seat belts up front. In the back, none really. So when you're trying to, Jesus, when you're trying to be as safe as possible, even if Jack isn't driving like a madman, that's gonna need a little bit of help. Oh, sh Number one, I hate you. Number two, ow. The one thing I do have to tell you is that getting the automobile going is actually quite easy. You may think because it's an LCV that, well, maneuvering this thing well in the city maneuvering is a problem but getting it going driving it is actually quite easy the clutch is very easy to deal with the steering is actually quite light i feel as if that if you stall this car give up your license and go back to school because this thing's a breeze to drive it really is it's fun to a certain extent till you have to think about the amount of hours that you need to spend in here and then you're starting to think that the heat from the engine will start cooking your bits and you may have bacon and eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And late in the evening. And every day. For the rest of your life. Huh, that must stink. You know, for such a large vehicle, it has such a small horn. Check this out. Tan -an -tan -an -tan. Tan -an -tan -an -tan. Right? Now I know what you're gonna say. It is, after all, no longer summer and the sun sort of like hides away for a little bit, rain start coming down. Yes, that is true. But I can base it on the fact that Jack and I have been out in the summer heat quite long enough to understand if an air conditioning system will cover that car enough or not. And I can say that in this case, it certainly will. All put together, I believe it's actually quite a cost-efficient vehicle when it comes to trying to figure out exactly what it is it can do. And plus, the line does start at 865,000 Philippine pesos. However, as it is though, as what it is right now with all the goodies and whatnot, well, to be honest with you, it's a bit perplexing. Look at the facts though. As a business owner, you want to be able to get something that won't exactly cost you an arm and a leg to cost-effectively purchase. And at the same time, you don't want it to cost you a kidney to maintain. 
Kia, however, holds its head up high because the K2500 dual aircon Carga is available at 1,110,000 Philippine pesos, which, to be honest with you, is actually more expensive than its Japanese counterpart. More so, the 4x4 option of this particular unit, which I think would be ridiculously awesome when you take it out to the farm and you use it for that kind of stuff. Here's the thing though, if you're a business owner and every once in a while you yourself need to get your hands dirty and get in there and do the job yourself because well sometimes you can't count on a lot of people, then it wouldn't be so bad to have a car or rather a truck that has a few creature comforts for your pleasure. And if that's the case, then this K2500 LCV just might be the light truck for you.